Ah, my next guest. Uh, whew, tough interview to book this one, partly because the Danish security police had to vet everybody concerned. Kurt Vestergaard is the man who drew the famous, infamous cartoon of Muhammad in 2005, which led to riots, murder, several threats on his life. Now, for those who say, oh, this is old news, well, why is it then that newspapers and TV shows still refuse to show this cartoon and others like it? Look, freedom is never old news. Kurt Vestergaard joins us now from Denmark. Kurt, how are you? Oh, yes, I'm fine. Thank you very much. Uh, you say that with such confidence. I live, uh, <laughs> I live a very normal life, uh, very well protected by uh, the Danish security and intelligence service. They are with me everywhere. They are very fine people, so I have a good time. And therefore is our common joke that those agents, they are happy that I am not a winter swimmer, as many people are here in Scandinavia, or a nudist. <laughs> you, you've got humor, which is admirable in such a case, but let's give some background here. Last Christmas, I think it was, there was a, a direct, de deliberate attempt on your life. A man tried to kill you. Yes, but uh, it was, uh, you know, prevented by the uh, intelligence service uh, preparations. They had uh, made my house almost a kind of a fortress with security room and so on. So uh, I came out of this uh, very terrible situation without a scratch. Mm. Now, we, we need to explain for those who don't know, and I can't imagine there are many, the reason you are protected by a security police all the time, the reason there are attacks on your life, is because as a cartoonist, you dared to draw a picture of Muhammad. Is this true? Uh, yes, uh, it, it, it is true. Anyway, by the Muslims, the cartoon is interpreted as the prophet with a bomb in his head, and uh, they don't like that you uh, depict their prophet as a terrorist. Mm. I have tried to uh, promote another uh, interpretation, that perhaps it is so that you could see the cartoon showing that the terrorists, the Islamists, they have taken the prophet as a hostage and placed a bomb in his head. But uh, the Muslims, they don't want to buy that version. They are more interested in buying the first one, that it is uh, uh, the prophet, because that can uh, generate, I think, more hatred. Why did you draw the cartoon? And this was back in, it was printed in 2005, I believe, so some years ago now. Why did you draw the cartoon in the first yes, place? Yes. In the first place, yes, there was a publisher who wanted to publish a children's book about uh, Islam. And uh, to this book, he wanted an illustrator to do uh, The Prophet. But no illustrator dare, dare do it. And this was a story suddenly, which, which suddenly appeared in, in, in my newspaper. And therefore, the editors, they um, asked uh, the, I think in Denmark, there's about uh, 30 cartoonists. They asked them to uh, make a drawing related to the, perhaps of the prophet himself, or related to the prophet. And then there was 12 who did it. And uh, then the protests came very, very fast in. First there was uh, a normal, quiet uh, demonstration by Muslims in Copenhagen. I think there were about 3,000 Muslims on the street. Uh, it was uh, peaceful, but then some of uh, the imams, the priests, 
they uh, took the cartoons with them uh, on a tour to um, to the Middle East, and then something happened. Then uh, crowds in the streets they demonstrated and uh, they um, burned down Dan uh, the embassy and Danish flags and uh, cried death to the cartoonists. I think that if these uh, imams hadn't done that, perhaps it, it would have been different. But anyway, the, the people in the streets were stirred up and uh, there were thousands who took part in these demonstrations, which I am sure is, uh, was, uh, were in fact uh, staged by the religious uh, authorities and also by the leaders of, the, of these countries. Thank you. Welcome back in the arena with Michael Corrin, Kurt Vestergaard, the cartoonist who dared to, uh, to draw a cartoon of Muhammad. And uh, Kurt, I've met you, I, I think you're a courageous man, but have there been moments in the past few years when you've said to yourself, I wish I had not drawn this cartoon? No, uh, no, really not. I'm quite convinced that this, this uh, clash between uh, democracy and, and uh, a religion would have occurred sooner or later. It might have been provoked by a book or a movie. Now it was the cartoons, and I think it was inevitable. So we, we have got to take this discussion um, now. There has been a lot of reactions before. There has been, uh, there were uh, exhibitions uh, which were cancelled. There were uh, threats to, to uh, many people in Europe who were cr critical to, to uh, Islam. There was a tragedy in, in uh, the Netherlands where the film director Van Gogh was, was uh, killed uh, in the street. So I think we have got to take this uh, situation. Mm -hmm. now, you, you said the clash between the state and religion, but you have drawn cartoons, you have said things very critical of Christianity. I don't think it's the state and religion. It seems to yes. me it's the state and Islam. Uh, well, um, I once drew uh, a cartoon of Jesus uh, he uh, was dressed in an Armani, uh, Armani suit, walking away, uh, away with a little briefcase uh, in his hand, walking away from the cross on which there was a, a, a signpost where you could read, see you on Sunday, 14 to 15 p.m., Jesus. And... Uh, I was re really very much criticized by, by, many, by many Christians. Uh, they thought that this cartoon was uh, blasphemous. Mm -hmm. But of course there were nobody who wanted to, uh, to kill me. And um, in the Danish democracy in, and in Danish satire, nothing is in fact holy we can this this is our tradition we can uh, satirize everybody the queen the prime minister the politicians and and everybody and i think you could look upon it like this when we now are criticizing muslims and their religion that is because we, in fact, consider them as ordinary Danish citizens. 
they cannot have any privileges, if you can use that expression. They will be treated by the satirists uh, in exactly the same way as the ordinary Danes. So it's in fact a kind of uh, a recognition of them as uh, citizens in our country. Mm. But it's very difficult, I may add, uh, to, to make them understand this situation. Mm. Just very quickly, l l last question. You, you mentioned the tradition in Scandinavia, Denmark in particular, of satire. Have you been given much support within Denmark, within the rest of the region? Uh, would you please repeat the question? Yes, of course. Have you been given much support by the, by the intellectual classes, the media, artists and so on in, yeah. in Denmark? Yes, I, I, really, I really have. I have got... Um, there is a lot of people in the street who have tapped me on the shoulder and said, well done, keep up the good work. And uh, I have also been awarded with uh, prizes for example, in in uh, in uh, Germany, right. but in fact, I am only a simple cartoonist who just has done his job. Well, you, you've done a remarkable job, and, and and many many in the world. Thank you so very much, as I do, <laughs> Kurt Vestergaard. Thank you so much, and I mean that. Yes, thank you very much.